Hey everyone, my name is Christopher Mackey, Chris for short, or K if you want to be even shorter than that, and I'm here to talk to you all today about my new book, Cloudlanders, which is releasing on the 17th of August, published by Floris Books. And just look, look at that amazing cover art. This was done by Huang Zhang, and it absolutely perfectly captures the magic, the mayhem, and the chaos that is Cloudlanders. But I can hear you asking, what is Cloudlanders? And why should I care about it? Well, I've come up with five reasons why I think people will love Cloudlanders. And I'm going to talk you through them right now before I give you a little reading of what to expect and a little flavour of what's in store with this book. Just be warned though, that flavour could be a little... mushroomy? So the first reason to love Cloudlanders is because of the world. Cloudlanders takes place on a floating island called Bastion that hovers high above the clouds thanks to the help of a mysterious magical material known as Lightstone. You can actually see the island here on the back cover of the book with its magical Lightstone core keeping it high above the clouds and out of reach of the waiting tentacles of something lurking in the seas below. But the world of Bastion isn't a safe place for our heroes. There are perilous mountains, dangerous forests, there's a village built on the ruins of an old fun fair, and even a secret grotto hidden inside a willow tree where absolutely everything is edible. And speaking of heroes, there are quite a few of them to choose from, because my second reason to love Cloudlanders is because of the characters. We have orphaned wood nymph twins, Aliana and Garrett. Aliana is a fowler, a dangerous hunter who can bring even the most monstrous beast to heel. And Garrett is a scholar who wants to research the artefacts and ancient writings of our time to learn more about his ancestors. We also have Kurt the Shroomling, a walking, talking, eight-foot mushroom with a terrible fear of heights. And his best friend Flicker, a gemstone fairy carved from fool's gold. They're out exploring one day when they happen to see something strange approaching the island. An outsider flying in an aeroplane. This is one zero. A strange boy who's lost his voice, but has a mechanical leg and a sense that something is very wrong in Bastion. And last but not least, we have Lycan, the white wolf who can shapeshift into any other creature on the island. And lucky for him, there's an awful lot of choice. This brings me nicely onto our third reason to love Cloudlanders, which is the creatures, of course. Bastion is full of dangerous creatures and beasts of every shape and size, from moss-coated marsh mammoths and man-eating Venus flesh traps, right through to elegant stickle stags. There are all manner of strange and wondrous beasts roaming the island of Bastion. But it's not the monsters and creatures on the island our heroes need to be worried about. It's the one that's lurking in the seas below, waiting for them to just make a tiny little mistake. You see, the fourth reason to love Cloudlanders is the mystery. Long before Bastion ever floated up into the clouds and escaped the reaching tentacles of the monster below, the Wave Wrecker, it planted a secret agent on the island with the express purpose of destroying the Lightstone at its core and causing it to fall back to the world below. Can our heroes figure out which one of them is the secret agent tasked with destroying the island? And what other secrets are they hiding from each other? And why? And last, but certainly not least, the fifth and final reason to love Cloudlanders is because of the adventure. The world of Bastion is an action-packed place where anything can happen and our heroes encounter many perils and pitfalls on their quest to save their island from a watery doom. They encounter an ancient crone made entirely of candy floss and a dastardly wicked paladin who wants to stop them at any cost. They come across an elegant queen ruling the land from a floating palace and they also encounter a strange invisible boy who can only be seen by one or two people. Our heroes are on a quest to save their island and I hope you join them very, very soon. So now I'd like to read a little extract from the story itself. Um, in this chapter, 
Kurt, the walking, talking, eight-foot mushroom with a terrible fear of heights, and Flicker, his tiny gemstone fairy companion, carved from fool's gold, are walking along the top of Windbreaker Brink, a giant stone wall that circles the whole of their island, and they climb to the top of a watchtower, and they look out to the skies beyond. And when they're looking, they see something very strange approaching, an aeroplane, and there seems to be someone inside it. He's not going to make it, Flicker realised. He's coming in too low. He can't see for all the clouds, Kurt gasped. We have to show him where to land. Flicker took off towards the back of the tower, where a derelict searchlight sat amongst all the other junk. She angled it down towards Windbreaker Brink, and then, using her fairy magic, she made her hands blaze. Placing her palms over the ancient lens, Flicker used the glass to focus this blinding barrage of light on a stretch of walkway below them. There, she shouted, that should help. The outsider, who must have spotted the shaft of light, wrenched up on his controls and tried to align himself with the brink. But the storm was all around him now, battering his fragile craft and pushing him back down. Lightning arced across the skies as the rain turned to hail. The plane shuddered, its smoking propeller grinding to a halt. Come on, Kirk gritted his teeth. You can do it just a little further. A bolt of lightning hit one of the wings, sending the plane into a violent corkscrew, and Kurt moaned. The pilot managed to stabilise the plane again, but he was struggling to lift it above the smothering clouds, and one of its wings was now on fire. We have to get down there, Kurt decided. He needs our help. Down there? Flicker looked over the edge of the watchtower to the windswept wall below them. Kurt, don't you remember how long it took to get up here? We'll never make it down in time. Besides, he's too low. Even if we could get down to the brink, we'd never be able to reach him. We aren't going down to the brink, Kurt said, snatching up an enormous length of rope from the stockpile near the back of the tower. We're going beneath it. B beneath it? Flicker stammered. What do you mean? Kurt didn't answer. He just gathered the rope around his waist and tied it tightly. Kurt, if this is a joke, then it isn't funny. Kurt anchored the rope to the searchlight and turned back to face her. <sighs> Ten seconds, he exhaled. Ten seconds until he's out of reach. Uh, out of reach? Flicker glanced nervously over her shoulder towards the sputtering craft. Kurt, you can't be serious. We have to help him, Kurt said, his mind made up and his fear half drowned. And we're doing it together. He rushed forwards, grabbing Flicker as he went, and the two of them tumbled off the top of the watchtower. No, Kurt, wait! Flicker shrieked as Kurt wrapped himself into a huge squishy ball around her. They hurtled downwards towards the brink and the endless expanse of clouds below it. The mushroom cap on Kurt's head acted like a spongy spotted parachute, slowing their descent as the wind whistled all around them. Yes, Kurt was afraid of heights. He was utterly petrified by the thought of falling off the edge of Bastion. But if someone was in trouble, then Kurt had to help them, even if it meant throwing himself off the top of a watchtower like the world's fastest falling star. Down they fell, past the watchtower door, past Windbreaker Brink, past the edge of the world as they knew it, towards the thick grey clouds that smothered the earth below. Kurt kept his eyes fixed firmly on the flaming plane and its terrified pilot, who was now standing over the controls, pulling desperately on levers and winches to no avail. They locked eyes as the plane drew level with Kurt. The shroomling reached out one of his hands. The outsider looked around at the plane, looked up at the brink, and seemed to come to the same conclusion as Kurt. He wasn't going to make it. He took his hands off the controls, scrambled out of the cockpit, and up onto the wing. What's he doing? Flicker cried, clinging tightly to Kurt's chest. If he's not careful, he's going to fall off. He won't fall, Kurt shouted over the rushing wind. He's going to jump. The outsider took a deep breath. Then he leapt from the flaming wing of his makeshift plane as another bolt of lightning struck the craft. He let out a guttural cry as he flew across the stormy expanse, his arms and legs flailing desperately as he reached for Kurt. They met in the eye of the storm, colliding like two out-of-control comets, and Kurt caught the outsider's rain-slicked hand. The rope went taut, and the three of them came to an abrupt, juddering halt above the clouds. 
the nosediving plane spiralled on beneath them, and Kurt felt the rope tighten around his waist as he spun like a lopsided mobile above a baby's cot. You caught him! Flicker squealed. You actually caught him! N now what? To be honest, Kurt said as he spun around again. I hadn't thought that far ahead. And there we go. I think we'll leave them there. Just hanging from a rope, suspended thousands of feet up in the air, above the clouds, just to see what happens next. So there we go. Those are my five reasons why I think you are going to love Cloudlanders, along with just a little taste of what's in store in the story. But don't forget, Cloudlanders is releasing on the 17th of August with this very, very shiny cover. And it will be coming to all good bookstores near you and also online. Um, so please pick up a copy. I hope you enjoy it as much as I've enjoyed writing it. Thank you very much.